Welcome back! It's time to finally go into Hyrule Castle and save the princess. But first, let's talk to this guy. Wow, someone actually died. Well, he kind of faded out, but you know. So, we're gonna head straight to the castle. I still can't really get over the pink Master Sword. I believe I'm going the correct way here. Now you can actually skip the Master Sword with a with a glitch in the game. Kinda too late for us to perform it now, but uh, I don't really care to. I'm not gonna use glitches. I'm challenging myself this run, but I'm not gonna use glitches. To, like, what, make it more challenging? Or something? Yeah. So it's time to charge straight into the castle. Hope you like those enemies that just wander around aimlessly because we're never gonna see them ever again. We're gonna see the enemies that charge at you though. They'll just have a different sprite. This little barrier can only be smashed with the Master Sword itself. Bam! In we go! This is actually fairly straightforward, it's just like a bunch of, um, just a bunch of rooms with enemies in it, which I really do like because, you know, combat in a Zelda game, ow. Need to be a little more careful because I don't have pots to fall back on this time. I should not damage race these guys. Oh. These two are annoying, though. What kind of stance is that for your swords, though? They're, they're like... They're like holding them overhanded so that they're ready to stab or something, but it's like... You don't hold a sword like that. So yeah, you have to hit them from the right angle because... Like, if you, if you clash swords with them, you'll get knocked back and that's really hard to control. Don't know what's up with the one-eyed bats. I'm going to have to actually use the lamp. I actually do hate wandering around here in the dark. Ugh. Of course the lamps have to... Oh, you can light it from across the gap. Okay, then. That's strange. You can't do it from the bottom, but you can from the top? Weird. Okay, let's move on. Those two you can just walk past, and I kind of recommend it. They're really annoying enemies. And then the room is dark again. So we have Archer, One Swords Dude, and now we have Darkness along with holes in the floor. That's wonderful. Light the way up here. Keep it lit. Oh, darn it. Oh yeah, and it sends you back to the beginning of the room if you fall down a pit. Revenge! <laughs> Ugh. Boy, these guys, you have to kill all the enemies. Why isn't it just a regular, like, kill all the enemies room? Instead, they make the last enemy drop the key. That's really strange. But I'm not complaining, it's just, like, a few seconds of... Did I get the... Okay, good. I don't know what's worse, the archers? the dudes with swords or the javelins. Can you move this? I keep thinking there's a room where you have to move a statue. Oh great, spears. Just what I needed. This is a good, <laughs> this is a good way to trap them actually. They'll just walk right into your sword. The spear can block you, but their faces can't. There's the key. 
Still don't know why we need a key. You could just make it a kill room. Uh, oh, I haven't shown something off yet. Come on, give me a heart. Give me a heart. I want a heart. There we go. Check this out. The sword beam! I, I just love the sword beam. It makes the craziest sound effect, and it's totally overpowered. Oh, thanks. I needed a fairy. Actually, this is a golden opportunity. Yes, I am going to keep the fairy in a bottle. Because that's the heroic thing to do. Okay, so that's the statue I have to move, apparently. And of course, in order to actually hit an enemy, he has to be on screen for you to see him get hit, otherwise it does not count. At least as far as I know. It could just be that your projectile goes off screen. The music is all dramatic now. <laughs> Got your ears in a tangle. You know, I actually am, am enjoying being a bunny. Uh-oh, what's he gonna do? What's he gonna do? It's a good thing they didn't have to draw any new graphics with that scene. With this, the se seal of the seven wise men is at last broken. This will have no consequences in the game itself, of course. Now only a matter of time. Armed with the power of gold... Is, is that a line from the original game? That's weird. He doesn't technically have the Triforce, but oh well, it's battle time. So, this, this fight kind of starts an annoying trend in Zelda. What you have to do is hit this guy's projectiles back at him, and I hate every single boss fight that uses this mechanic. So I'm gonna give him the humiliation he deserves. Oh, can't you can't you can't reflect the blue one. See, there's always a boss in every Zelda game that uses this. But you can use the bug catching net to reflect him. Oh, he's gonna use the uh Oh! Wow, I should have stood still. That attack is more devastating than I remember. Okay, you know what? Maybe the bug catching net isn't such a good idea because. Yeah, the angle, unless you unless you time it real well, it's harder to get the right angle on him than if you were using the sword. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I made a mistake there. Okay, it might be in your best interest to, when he goes to the top of the room like that for the lightning attack, to stay at his sides. Now, I just said I don't like, um... Tenet, playing tennis with a boss like this, but this is actually kind of okay because you do have to put effort into dodging the lightning attack, and you do have to watch for the blue orb attack too. So this isn't so bad. Although, if you're horizontal like that, then it doesn't really matter. You know, actually, having a blind spot there for the lightning attack is just stupid. So, eventually, he will go down after you've reflected enough attacks. Oh, that was that was a bad move. But see, the thing is, for every Zelda game that does a tennis boss after this, it's just so boring. Like, Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time is, like, way, way boring, and the phase of this during Phantom Ganon is boring, too. Before that, Phantom Ganon was pretty interesting. Well, sort of interesting, anyways. My power over you is complete, and he will never appear again until the final dungeon of the game. Telepathy, sure. <laughs> the Dark World is definitely not low rule, by the way. 
They're apparently completely different. Even though they look exactly the same except for this pyramid, which just has low root castle in the, uh... In the Link Between Worlds or whatever. So yeah, we get to go and save seven maidens. Which, you know, is a good enough objective. I think I should have time enough to save at least the first one. And now for the greatest song in the game. And probably in any Zelda game ever, this is my favorite song across all Zelda games. There's a heart piece. So right around here is where, if you were playing the GBA version of this game, there would be a dungeon called the Palace of the Four Sword, because because the GBA version of this was packaged with a, a Four Swords game. Uh, I kind of wish I could play it. Like, like maybe I should have done the... Well, this hack is for the Super Nintendo version, so... I, I, I don't really see why they've never um, released the Palace of the Four Swords somehow. Like, they didn't include it in any virtual console releases of this. Oh, by the way, the enemies are crazy hard now because that guy, that guy does four hearts, I think? And a lot of enemies here do two hearts also. Let's see what the sign says. Palace of Darkness, okay. <laughs> nice job there, buddy. You've killed your own friend, I guess. Okay, I lied about the enemies that just wander around aimlessly. These guys have that same AI package. They just throw their spears instead now, too. And these are the, uh... These are the, uh, these are the enemies that chase after you. I could have sworn you could pull one of those and it would do something. I don't know. That's just a fairy fountain, I think. So yeah, the Dark World is this kind of mirror of the Light World. Except it's different. Like, obviously, things look different here. Uh, you don't get anything from going in there, I guess. It's just backstory. There's a lot of NPCs here, oddly enough, who, like, just give you backstory. Oh, and we have a classic hedge maze coming up. There's a lot of NPCs that just give you backstory, even though when you rescue the maidens, you'll get lots and lots of backstory there, too. So let's see if I remember the path through here. Also, this is technically where the game really begins, because you start getting a lot of cool items from dungeons now. It's not just the utility stuff we're used to. Oh, hi there! I love rupees more than anything! <laughs> the other option is never give him anything, but, you, but unfortunately you need him. And this is kind of annoying because it's a sort of a paywall, let's say. Not that I don't expect people to have 100 rupees by this point, but you have to pay him in order to unlock the first dungeon. And that's sincerely annoying. Like, it's annoying when you have a paywall, and anybody who's played Wind Waker knows what I'm talking about. But, oh well, we're in. In A Link Between Worlds, they inserted a stupid as heck stealth section right there. I, I hate it. I, I hate it when they do that, like... They always try to, like, make a stupid stealth section in Zelda games when, like, this isn't a stealth game. If it were Metal Gear, it would be fine, but this is not Metal Gear. Alright, where am I going first? I guess I'm going down those stairs. Because that statue is movable. Oh, uh, what's this? I I'm trying to remember, it has been a while. Yay! It is actually really good that they made you able to dash into cracked walls like that, because if you don't have any bombs, then you'd be stuck. And you'd have to go and get some. I think you can drop a bomb here? Yeah, you can. It does nothing, but you can drop a bomb there. These enemies are fun. They move in the opposite direction as you. And if you face the red one, he shoots at you. So you have to... <laughs> I'm bad at this. Oh, jeez. His hitbox! His hitbox! Alright. 
Alright, I got him, finally. The, the regular ones are just boring. Those are annoying enemies. There's also a lot of cracked walls there that do nothing. That's really odd. Oh, that was so epic. I like that. What do we have here? We have the map! Oh, you can't dash into that? Do you plant a bomb then? That's strange. That's kind of odd that you can do it on the vertical walls, but not the horizontal ones. Or maybe it's different, I don't know. Here's where you can load up on fairies if you want. I don't know why it's here. Why would you, like... And of course it's annoying to have the fairy run into you before hitting the net. I don't know why you would put a fairy fountain there, but whatever. We have a key! So that, so that little trip was worth it, even though we've essentially hit a dead end now. So I believe I've said this already, by the way, the floor came back. I believe I've said it already, but fairies only restore ten hearts. And that's even if you... Like, like, I know this because I've died and had to be revived with more than 10 hearts, so in terms of life recovery, if you've got a lot of heart containers, a, um, a red potion, or a blue potion, would be much more effective than a simple fairy. I mean, the only difference between the... <laughs> the only difference between a fairy and a red potion is that you have to use the red potion manually. Which, uh... I don't think it's too much of a... Like, I don't really get the difference, but... Another key! Well, where to now? Was there a locked door somewhere? What am I, uh, looking for? Oh! There's a locked door in the center there. Okay, then we're good. I'm totally blind. Those enemies can't be killed yet. It's kind of odd that they would put them there when you can't even kill them yet. Let's move up here. A third key. Alright then. Oh yeah, the sword beam is just so epic. This is a fun room. The floor starts collapsing. Okay, maybe the sword beam is a little too overpowered. I don't actually <laughs> know for sure. Oh, the compass. What is in here? This should be... Money? Seriously? Okie dokie then. It's the other one, isn't it? You can push one of them. Can you bomb there too? I don't know why you can just make holes in the ground like that. It doesn't... No, oh, we're just back here. I gotta find the boss key eventually. Oh, I used up the... Okay, we got no choice. Gotta head back. Well, that was a waste of a key, actually. Uh, does shooting... Would shooting that do anything? What's through here? Ah, the way forward. Now this, I definitely remember being a puzzle where you have to push the statue, so I hope there was a hint that you could push the statue by this point, somewhere. There we go. 
lots and lots of arrows just to... What the... Is it lagging? It was lagging? How very strange. Now this, I don't think there was a hint to at all. You shoot the eye. I guess eyes are something that we shoot with arrows. Because, you know, Goma taught us that back in Zelda 1, but... Ugh, <sighs> whatever. Whatever. And that'll be all for now. We actually can't progress at this point. So, uh, moving on or back. Maybe I should have looked up a walkthrough of this... Oh gosh, I have to hit the switch again. I didn't hit it before. Why did it change back to red? So you can move this. And I think we'll be back here, yeah. So, in this room, you can see that there is a floor beneath us, apparently. So we fall, and... We're on the floor below. And I need a key. Oh. There, there isn't a key here, is there? Because that would just be... Oh gosh darn it. Okay then. So it looks like we're gonna need a little bit of backtracking. Fortunately it's not that far away. I'm mildly annoyed though. We're right back here. Just a little bit annoyed. So that should be the boss key. Good. Because we saw the... Because we saw the chest with the dungeon item in it. Really? You're putting me back here? Well, fine then. Okay, let's look at the map. It shows the dungeon item chest on the map in this game too, which is really, really good. Wait. Don't we need another key? Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh. For this one, it, you got to uh, throw a bomb at the switch so that it explodes after you've crossed the blue gap. Yep, there we go. Does dashing kill these guys? Uh, nope, but good enough. Heh. <laughs> I do need a key. Darn it. I haven't gone down here yet. Money. Don't know what you need money for, but money's good. Uh, key? Key. Good. Or should I come down here? And arrows. I don't know why. It's funny that they would even bother with a with, like, the door that you need the big key to get into, considering that you need the item in the chest in order to... Oh, wait, wrong direction. Oopsie. I swear I've played this game before, you guys. At least we know the dungeon isn't so poorly designed you can permanently get stuck. Oh, jeez, these enemies again? I've been taking a lot of hits, too. That chest probably has... No a, a key! Okay, then. I hope you find that, because if you miss it, 
it's not gonna be good. And we get the hammer. The magic hammer. It can pound stakes into the floor. I think you need this item in order to access any other any of the other Dark World portals, so technically, the Palace of Darkness has to be the first Dark World dungeon you go into. But there's a there's a few ways you can mix up the order for the rest of the game. And I suppose I'll try and mix it up as best I can as we go. Now we can kill these enemies. That takes a lot of hits. Oh, and they speed up too. So let me see here. I know where I want to go now. We need to go... I think up into... Wait. Oh yeah, I know where I'm going. I'm ramming into a lot of things, but I know where I'm going. Don't worry. Just make the transit a little faster here. I have to redo the puzzle. Uh, at least Link's uh, facial expressions in this hack are pretty amusing. Oh! I forgot you could do that. What I did there was... I I turned while he was in the process of getting hit. So what, it, what wound up happening was he couldn't turn to face me because he was busy getting hit. And he'll only shoot at you if you're both facing one another, so that's fine. Uh, that's an easy way to deal with him. So in order to get to this part of the dungeon, you have to have the hammer in order to pound these annoying things. Very obnoxious. Always take the time to pound every last one of them. Shoot that switch from there to get past it. These puzzles are pretty basic. Not overly complex like in later Zelda games. That's, that's all my opinion, of course. Oh, lots of them. Oh, dear. Oh, my. This is, uh... A lot more of them than I... Uh, I might actually need that fairy. This is... This is actually pretty close. Okay, never mind. I'm definitely prob gonna need this fairy against the boss, though, now that I think about it. <laughs> Doesn't this room kind of remind you of the little staircase patterns from Zelda 1? Oh, well. And the boss of the Palace of Darkness is the King Helmasaur. In order to beat this guy, you have to knock that mask off his face, and there are actually two options for doing that. Option one, which is not recommended, but safer, is to toss your bombs at him. Oh, shoot! <laughs> I did not actually... I didn't see that coming. Oopsies. Well, we had to see his death animation at some point, right? Oh, it's only seven hearts. That's even worse. Yeah, I'm definitely getting the uh, potions when I get out of here. So yeah, watch out for that tail swing. It's designed to get you if you're trying to play possum and stay way in the back, which is pretty cool. So yeah, bomb his mask off or hit him with a hammer, which is actually the dungeon item. And then, you have to hit that crystal, obviously, on his head. Which you can do with either arrows or the sword. He'll probably be close enough that the sword that you should basically just use the sword anyhow, but... Options! They gave us options for killing this guy! You don't have to do it one way or another. 
I mean, I don't know what the difference would be, but... You know, you can try something different, and I love the smiley face. So see, that's what I kind of want to see with later Zelda games, and Majora's Mask for the N64. I haven't mentioned this, but Majora's Mask was good about giving the player options, and then in the remake, they just took all those options away. Here's your maiden that we're trying to save. No, he's not. He's not trying to invade the light world. Because, like, you don't see any dark world characters in the light world, so this, uh... <coughs> oh, excuse me. They don't exactly do much about the sense of urgency, so... They don't try to make it feel like it's urgent, but that's the end of that. Dungeon 1 completed! I'll think about where we're headed to next because, we look at the map now, there are six other locations with maidens we need to save. We can go to two or four, I don't think you can go to three yet, but it might be possible. Well, you should be able to go to three. But two, four, and three are our options now. Five, six, and seven, we'll have to wait a little while. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll let the viewers decide where to go next, but I'll try and break the sequence as much as possible for now. Until next time.